Lesson 9.3a, Exploring the Order of Operations. The order of operations is a rule for evaluating expressions in a certain order. The first thing we do is perform operations within parentheses, then we find the values of exponents, then we multiply or divide from left to right, then we add or subtract from left to right. I want to explain this quickly so you'll know what I'm doing. Multiplication can be shown as the big X, like 2 times 3, as a dot, like we've been using, as 2 times 3, or as parentheses, like this. The parentheses can be around one factor, doesn't matter which one, or it could be around both factors. And I'm going to start using parentheses for multiplication a lot more from now on. An easy way to remember the order of operations in the USA is with the mnemonic P-E-M-D-A-S. It stands for parentheses, exponents, multiply, or divide, add, or subtract. We have our P-E-M-D-A-S, and for decades, like close to 100 years or more, they've used please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to help remember the order of operations. A mnemonic is a device or code to help memory. Now, the reason I said in the USA is because other countries use a different one. They might have brackets here, so that might start with a B. I think in Canada and New Zealand they do that. So why do we do this? Why do we use the order of operations? Well, if we didn't follow a set procedure to evaluate expressions that contain several operations, we could get a different answer than someone else. If someone just starts from the left and goes straight across, they would have 5 plus 2, which is 7, times 6. That would give them a 42. If we follow the order of operations, we'll do the multiplication first and have 2 times 6, which is 12. Then we'll add the 5 and we'll have 17. Completely different answer. So it's good for everyone to follow the same set procedure. We can compare two expressions without using the order of operations and with. If we go straight across, we have 48 minus 12. That's going to give us a 36. Then if we divide it by 2, we'll have 18. Then if we add the 1, we'll have 19. If we use the order of operations, we're going to do the division first. There's no parentheses, so we skip that step. There's no exponents, so we skip that step. There's no multiplication, so we go right to the division. That's going to give us a 6. Now we have 48 minus 6, which gives us a 42. Now we add the 1. That gives us a 43. We get two completely different answers. Female mice have anywhere from 3 to 12 babies per litter each, but the typical litter size is 5 to 6. They can each have up to 10 litters per year. That's a lot of mice. If two female mice each had a litter of five babies, and each of them had five female babies, what pattern could we use to find how many there would be if those five each had five? So here we have one female mouse. So the question was asking about two. So let's figure out one and see what happens. One female mouse has five female babies. That's going to be five to the first power. That's five. She has five babies. If each of them has five female babies, now we've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25. We've got five raised to the second power. See what happened when we went down another generation? And if each of these orange ones had five babies each, it would be five raised to the third power. Each generation or wave would be one power of five greater than the previous generation. And the pattern would be five to the first power, five raised to the second power, five raised to the third power, and so on. So if we had two female mice, at this point, we would have two times five raised to the third power. We'd have 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. So that means we have 2 times 125. That would be 250 mice. So we evaluate the exponent first, then we multiply it to the 2. 
So we finished the first part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the second part, simplifying a numerical expression with the order of operations. We're going to talk more about parentheses in the last part. So either you can use, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to help you remember the order of operations. Just remember, it isn't multiply then divide, it's multiply or divide left to right, whichever comes first, and then add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. Or maybe you can think of your own mnemonic to help you. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you'll join me for next time. Bye.